we're going to do a video on this Woodland Mills HM130 Max and talk a little bit about comparing it to Hudson Sawmills. So stay tuned. We got some pretty good information throughout this video to uh, do some education with you on. All right. Sawmill just showed up. Let's get this thing up here. All right. We just got our Woodland HM130 Max unloaded off the truck. Pallet was crushed underneath it, so our straps are a little loose here, I'd say. And then the box is torn up. We got a little bend in the frame. I don't feel anything touching it. But uh, just a good note, if you ever receive freight, make sure you note any damage before you sign for it. Looks like the bottom box is our mill and track, and the top, this is that optional power feed we ordered in. We'll have to uh, unbox here shortly. All right, so you're going to buy a portable sawmill. What is it that you don't know until you receive things? Well, we're going to show you a couple of them here, hopefully. So this is the woodland mill we just pulled off the truck. And you can see this comes in a box, and it is a uh, kit mill. So it is going to be assembly required. In comparison to the Hudson offering, this is a HFE 36, not the exact comparison to this unit, but uh, I've got an HFE 30 buried a little bit deeper, um, which would be more of a matchup to it. But you can see this is packaged how our dealers would receive it if they were doing a full truckload, or um, if a customer was gonna come pick up a mill, they could pick it up just like this. So the track is underneath, the mill head is on top. Everything is 100% assembled. Uh, even the lube tank on that one's set up. So to uh, to take this home and set it up, you you uh, lift the head off, you put the track on the ground, level things up, and set the head on, and you're cutting. So literally, you could have this mill cutting in 30 minutes if you get if you drag it home. In comparison, obviously, we got some work to do in this one. Now, if we we're going to ship one to you, um, just like this woodland showed up, this is the uh, crate that we would have around our unit. And same situation, this one is completely uh, assembled. So this is a 336 in, in this crate. I'm not using this mill as a comparison other than just showing the crate. So what would you need to do on this one to get it ready? Put the track on the ground, put the head on the track, mount your loop tank, and you're ready to go. Uh, this thing comes with a splash of gas and test run already. And uh, battery everything uh, I did find out that the woodland mill does not come it's dry and does not have even a battery with it so I'm gonna have to go buy a battery for this thing so all right well hopefully that helps a little bit just a quick comparison as to uh, some diff different configurations I think you can see that there's some value so there's price difference yes there's also uh, being able to buy something that was fully a fully welded frame, manufactured, and test run before it ever left the factory. Um, and uh, ready to go when you get it. Okay, so we just showed some different ways that we palletize and, and ship these units, depending on whether they're going to be picked up by a customer or we're going to put them on a truckload and ship them LTL. But let's talk about the track, which is the black underneath this frame. Um, this is fully welded and fully assembled and ready to go. There's no assembly required whatsoever on that track. And that ends up being a big thing. And by the way, there's no bolts with the exception of bolting the track from end to end to each other. And what if you want additional track? Well, we stock additional track and you would just buy however many pieces of track you're looking for, six foot or seven foot lengths, depending on the model of mill we're talking about. And you just lay it on the end of the track that you already own bolt it on, move your end stop tabs to the end, and uh, you just can build this like a railroad track as much as you want. Uh, I've got a couple customers that have 70 foot of track that they, um, they're they cutting ridge beams and stuff for custom homes, so. Okay, well, I thought that was worth mentioning the track here. Okay, well, there's a few things. Hopefully that helps understand some of the differences of these units. Of course, once we assemble, they'll look more similar. But uh, obviously we have a little bit of a project ahead of us here.
Okay, so we got the box off the top and we pulled the, the metal frame off the top of this thing and here are our contents. And we're gonna start unboxing this here a little bit. If you don't mind, Braden, we'll start pulling pieces out of here. So we got Braden to help out with uh, putting this thing together. He already owns one of these, so I figured he might know a few tricks ahead of time. So he's just been sharing a few bits and pieces of the unit you know, they've been using already and some of the things that they're have happened with it and what they like and don't like. So as I understand, the mill head itself is fairly assembled. So yeah, if I remember correctly, you have to put the post in and then put the um, top crossbeam that comes. Kind of build the cage for it. Yeah. The the head itself, the engine, the band wheels, the belts, and the blade are even installed on it from what I've looked at already on some videos. So we're gonna set this down and we're gonna unpack these pieces. Oh my god. Oh. Look at that. There's a lot of boxes in here. All right, well, when we received this, I don't know, we, we noted on the shipping paperwork that there was some damage. You can see right here, we've got some pretty good paint scuffs on that. And then we're just unpacking our uh, frame here. And I don't know, you can probably see right there, there's our stainless steel caps. We got some pretty good dents in that too. So a little bit of damage in the shipping on this one. Well, to get our track, the head was kind of on top, so we had a chip crane, so we kind of cheated here a little bit and plucked it out so we can get to this track and get the track out. So, so far, we've got all the head frame components were kind of packed on the top here in our lube tank and whatnot, so we'll see if we can get this track out, out of this thing here. All right, we got a pretty good gap from putting the mill together to getting the track set up outside and trying to level it all out. And, you know, I've I've heard feedback from people giving me a little grief on the fact we don't have leveling feet on our track. And, you know, I, I get that that's appealing, but I can tell you the leveling feet on this has turned into a monster project. And I understand why there's leveling feet on it because this track system is not structural at all so you know you've got this this seems to be sizable angle iron on it i'll give you that where it's a you know wide on the bottom and not quite full on the sides i don't know exact measurements two by three and a half or something like that but but the catch is is when you look here there's no there's nothing holding on the sidewall so if i were to put a fork under here or a pry bar and lift up you'll see this gap spread so from end to end to get this thing not only level but so that it's not uh, you know bowing in the middle or, or sagging in the middle or whatever or, or left to right is tweaked or whatever it's I, we've got an hour and a half just trying to get this thing leveled out here so um, probably sense a little frustration in my voice so I don't mean to be that way but uh, this has been a project and to move this track, I've uh, got a new respect on the fact that it is not something that is easily moved. Because you know, you've got to set, you know, this width from rail edge here to rail edge over on the other side is 37 inches. Okay, but I got to make 37 inches from this end all the way down to the other end. And in that process, I've got to make sure they're parallel and they're not bowed or whatever anyways it, and then once you get that done you got to measure your diagonals so from here to there and then from here back to here and if it's not square then you've got to kind of kind of jog everything to get it so that the track is square so uh a ton of time and a ton of frustration <laughs> getting it to this point but we got it. so that's the good news right so we've got this thing set up we can go put our, our mill head on here but uh that's kind of what we're working on in the meantime just wanted to kind of run through that real quick um so i don't have the hudson track set up yet we've got some trailer units out here at the moment but uh we're going to set up a ground track and have a comparison to that here in a bit but uh anyway the there you go that's the long and short of it also i've noticed there is a substantial gap between bunks so we've got one two three 
or a five on this. And this is a, uh, I think it's like a 13 six track roughly. Um, and then you can see the only the center three have uh, those steel caps on them. So you've got basically, in essence, you've got three bunks that are designed to hold your log because these end pieces, you're not gonna put a, you're not gonna put your log on here because your mill head couldn't cut it, of course. So you've got three bunks to hold your log where we're gonna have uh, substantially more on our, so I, I don't know, here. I'll run over here real quick while we're rolling the same video. This is the trailer, yes, but it's the same spacing on our cross bunks on these things. So this is a 24 foot trailer. And anyways, we got substantially more cross pieces on there to set your log on and then pinch against and everything else. So, okay, well, we're gonna get to it and get this mill head put together and uh, get her all set up and get some test runs put on her. Right, we're gonna set up our track for the HMP 30. And we set up the woodland track here yesterday. And I had a little video I did after we set it up. Probably not the kindest words if I uh, don't edit that out, but uh, it was a process. And what we learned is that this track, it doesn't have any rigidity as far as uh, if it lengthwise. So this seam here where the two pieces come together, there's just these bolts and there's a plate underneath that bolts it so you can literally i don't know if i can do it by hand with you can see that gap just by that's just by me picking up that piece there so no strength on that this track is fully welded so we've got three by three by quarter angle on this and when we bolt our track together and we'll show you in a minute but there's bolts that'll go through here and clamp these two pieces together so this whole surface clamps tight and uh, we don't really have as much flux on that and then the track as you can see everything is welded so there's really no bolts except for our log dogs which because these are movable there's multiple locations where we can put those but everything else on this track is welded and if you ever decide to add some of your own track in addition, pretty easy to add to that, just some angle iron track, or angle iron to weld up. Okay, so we've got our track set up. Woodland Mill probably took us, we didn't keep track, hour and a half plus, maybe two hours, and 20, 30 minutes on this one. So, and what's interesting is we just did a little test here. Maybe I can have Joe demonstrate for us, but there is no substructure underneath our track. We just have it, you know at the end the middle and the other end there should be more in here but even with that the track by itself that wall the track is solid so this track here you've got the angle iron but we talked about there's lack of strength or structure in that and then we have the full length of this we have a four by six on either side to support that plus the track itself and maybe you can show us the same thing on this one Joe I don't know if you can see that but we got some flex in that it's not dramatic but and that could be taken out it. yeah you can feel it even but that we could take that out by putting bigger timber underneath there but that's not that's not small stuff we've got in there so anyways pretty interesting I'm growing a, a very strong appreciation for this track system that's fully welded, fully assembled, and structural. Well, we're getting ready to throw this <coughs> log on this woodland mill here. We did all the setup, got some video of all that, the process to it. And when I put the head on this end, everything feels good, solid. Yep, when I put it on this end, So, we've got some sort of twist in the track, so this side over here is a little bit low. We'll have to crank this up to this end, just on the track, this side. This end's good, but then it comes into a twist over here, 
And I guess I point all that out is that this, the amount of flex and give that's in this track is kind of amazing. I mean, it is a lot to set up and get just right. So anyway, we're hours into it and put some more time into it. That's all I got. Okay, we got her all set up. We got her level. We got the twist out of the track. And I will admit I have been a little bit tough on this mill so far. Now, how about positives? <clears throat> the bunk system that is on here, I do like the fact that it's raised up. So if you're loading with forks, you can set it on the bunks and then uh, back right out without having to roll it on. It does have these backstops that you could roll against um, too. So that's kind of a nice setup. Uh, the only thing on those is that once you get cutting with those, you have to loosen this T-panel and raise them up and down every time. And once you get down into your lower cuts, you actually have to remove this and then take the shorter one here and put it in separately. So, and then it kind of takes two hands to maybe, and then you would pinch against that with your log dogs. But anyway, it's kind of unique. You have to interchange those backstops. But that's what we got. I get it. It works. And yeah, I'm going to set this log on here, and then we're going to go throw a sim or same log, just a different. Uh, Part of it is actually the base. This is the second stump up, but we're gonna throw the base on this HFE 30. Okay, so on the HFE 30, in comparison, we're talking about throwing a log on here. Um, we can take these log dogs with the J-bar, put them up, come over with our, uh, our forks, and then actually tilt against back or tilt and have it go against the backstop uh, but you are in between the, the log dog and the backstop so if I were to pick on that system this might be one but aside of that I personally really enjoy how they work together we'll talk about that later I'm sure but um, it makes a one person milling operation substantially easier versus trying to uh, do separate pieces with log dogs and backstops and trying to press a log up against it and get stuff square. It's hard to do with one person compared to this. And now what I probably should do is move log dogs on this thing. I think we'll be all right on this one, but there's just a couple bolts here on the track. And then you can see the bolt hole there. We can move that one in, this one up or back, whichever way. And of course, this track is as simple as, as it bolts together here. If you want to extend this track out, you just buy another section of track and you just bolt it in here. And then you can kind of make a railroad track of it as much as you choose. I have a customer that does a bunch of custom home ridge beams and he has 70 foot of track of this stuff put together. All right, first cuts on the Woodland HM130 Max. Cuts look good. Feel a little bit of waviness in there. This is pretty naughty, pretty naughty, but I took my time and it's wandering up and down. A little confused, need to read instructions. Recommended blade tension, two and a half to three full turns from snug. I don't know if that means you snug it and back it off two and a half to three, or if you snug it and then go two and a half to three from there. So I'm assuming you go past snug two and a half to three turns. So I'll have to check that out. The other thing I've noticed, made two cuts in both times, is I go to try and back the blade over the cut. The blade is climbing. And I took my time the second time. There's probably a 16th or 8th or eighth inch drop there. It's about the thickness of the blade. So I don't know what that's all about, but uh, anyway, cut good. Seemed good. Uh, Something that was interesting is when I went to go start this thing, and it's even in a worse spot now, the recoil is down below here. So to start this mill with it up, like right from now, that'd be, I guess I could pull over here a little bit, but you're kind of in a hole with the, with the pull start on it. 
And then to get this started, you know, you get your choke and your fuel, but your choke on and try to just pull it, it would not fire. Uh, it would just spitter and sputter a couple times. So then I had to, on the throttle, which is over there on the handle, plus pull it over here, which I'm 6'4 with a long arm span. It was everything I could do to kind of make that happen. So anyway, just little things you notice as you start playing around. Um, the throttle wasn't a nuisance as I was cutting, but it sure was to get it started. And I don't know if I see a huge benefit personally from having the throttle on the handle where on our HFE 30, our throttle is on the engine. Once it's revved up, it'll sit there and hold RPM. So you can push the mill from your left side, your right side, you've got kind of move to the front and look for if you're coming closer to dogs or whatever so anyway so in fairness I have this as high as it will go just to see how high it will go and my recoil is behind this here but it's a lot smaller structure here you know we can pull underneath it and we have a we're quite a ways over I think we're what yeah 28 inches above so typically we're not going to be starting our engine that high so if we drop this thing down, there's 24 right there. All the starters underneath that crossbar. All right, well, I think I'm gonna fire this up and take a whack on this one. Same log, this is the, the base, and then this log over here is the next step up off of that log. And then from there we have the next one on the wood miser. Okay, we're gonna just do a quick wrap up on this. Woodland Mill. Uh, we've had a chance to obviously get it, put it together, do some cutting on it, and uh, actually it is going to a new home tomorrow. So just wanted to capitalize on this opportunity to run around with it set up here real quick. Uh, I've, I sold this to a customer uh, that he has owned one of these in the past, and he's just comfortable with what this one is, and we worked a deal for him to uh, to own another one. So anyway, this will be gone here tomorrow. I'm just going to go through a couple things that I would like to highlight. Uh, we talked about this didn't come with a battery. You know, they're imported in, they don't ship batteries. I think that's the reasoning either way. If you want to put a battery on this thing for electric start or for the power head, you're going to have to buy it, go out and buy a battery. The lift system on this did not fall in love with this at all. Uh, a lot of rotations to make a little bit of impact on height adjustment in comparison to what I'm used to with the Hudson Mills. Also, uh, if you don't push this in enough, it has a tendency to start dragging. You can see all the marks on here from anybody that was running it. It's something did not fall in love with that. Uh, throttle, throttle worked okay. Uh, pretty darn stiff and you were stuck at this location while cutting. So if you're cutting, you're here. So if you're trying to watch something this or that, and you want to go to the other side and, and look while you're cutting, you can't do this on this mill. That's something I'm not used to. Uh, Hudson mills all have throttles on the engines and they stay on so you can move around and while you're cutting and make some adjustments. Uh, blade tensioning system, the whole snug thing threw me off. We worked with it. We just used it because it was a quick access, but uh, had a lot of inconsistency on on uh, tension for the blade, and then also uh, had some <laughs> variations in our cuts. Quite honestly, the blade guide system. I do like the fact that it's toolless, or there's nothing you have to release or clamp, and it's pretty quick to change. But um, we experienced on this as the as it's running it wants to pull this in on its own. So if you pull it out where you want it, you start cutting, it was drawing itself in. I know there's some adjustments where you could change pressure on the detent to probably remedy that. Didn't get that far into it, but there's things we noticed, right? Um, the magnetic scales, all you have on this mill are is magnetic scales. So there's a couple that come with it. They give you different ranges, that's cool. The fact that you don't have a baseline scale that is always there, I don't understand that. Uh, we've got magnetic scales that we offer, but we always have a sticker on there so that once you have it set, it's set 
and if you want to put a magnetic scale over to start doing some different things you set it how you want but you you don't ever have to recalibrate your head i didn't fall in love with that one um water tank if you want to come around here maybe i'll show you a couple things from the other angle the water tank on this thing um looks super cool shiny aluminum but pretty low capacity it's high to fill and bigger than that this valve on the bottom uh the gentleman's bought this unit and uh the, the gentleman that helped me assemble this one Braden, they both probably honestly their number one thing is they pointed at that immediately and said problem problem that thing gets plugged all the time oh we hate that thing so ironically that was probably the biggest target that i saw from uh people that previously used those that had a frustration level on it um anyways that's the water tank you get the rest of it from there um track sweeps that are on this thing they're simple they help clean out the rollers we have a track sweep system on ours that actually goes over the roller to protect the dust from getting on and then actually helps clean the track itself where we don't have that opportunity here um, i did get feedback from customers that have run these and own these about the blade guide system uh, the bearing that's in the back this is actually a pretty good example you can see how packed in the sawdust is there's a bearing back inside of here you can feel it from the back but they both told me that that just gets packed up with things and they seize up and they go through those bearings pretty regularly. And that's roughly it on the mill head. Um, these bunks on the, on the uh, track, there's three of them that you work off of. There's one on either end that doesn't have the stainless steel cap. Those are just structure. But what we did find with this track system that was on here, if we put on the working link logs we typically would work with we didn't have much overhang to put on here and we could potentially have a substantial amount of overhang over on this side or it was if we did catch all three bunks you couldn't be very long past that and then you were it just was too long so i would like to see more cross members in this if it were mine so that it's got a little more accommodating to different log links um, the dog system works fine, um, but it's, I don't know, it's got a lot of flipping and flopping and ups and downs and pinches and you got to hold things to get it to where you want. So to me, it seemed a little cumbersome. All the things you had to do, if you want it out of the way, you got to kind of hold it off. Um, as far as the, the cam system, as far as pinching in on the, on the log, that worked just fine. But getting it to the right spot and whatnot, to me, was anyways a little bit cumbersome so that's that uh, i've already talked to the think on the uh the backstops it comes with two of these long ones and it comes two of these short ones and there's a long one here and a short one here there's three pockets though so i guess you have to pick if it's going to be in these two or those two depending on your log length i didn't like the fact that they were unique in length and the fact that you had to adjust them constantly and you had to change them once you went so far down this one is down all the way it can be into us down to where our board is with the feet i think there's a really good probability of hitting these with your blade because they're going to be at a different height than what your dogs are a lot of things to keep track of and you're going to be on the opposite side of the machine when you're running it probably my biggest frustration that we ran through in the tire process was the track um we just, there's just no structure to this thing. And then as we started putting logs on this thing, it moved around on us a fair, a fair bit. But I think I've already belabored that probably enough that I don't need to get too much into that. But anyway, that's kind of our story on this woodland mill. And uh, hopefully this was beneficial to you to see what this mill is and maybe some comparison to uh, other product and helps you make a decision as to what would be the best mill for you to buy. Appreciate you watching.